cocoa. That was in the fridge. Hmm. Huh? Hmm. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> they sent y'all this. Yeah. Where you bought it? Not me. All right, we are recording. I'm trying to get that sponsorship. I <laughs> like <laughs> Vita Coco. Hmm. You got. Why don't you turn the, the label? Because they put the spout. Here, why they put I take a picture of you. Put the spout with the Vita Coco. Hashtag brand post. Hashtag brand partner. <laughs> yes. Hashtag, hashtag living Vita Coco. Living, 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 La, living La Vita, Vita Coco. Coco. Living, living La Vita Coco. You're talking about coconut water? That's just so delicious to me. But people really either fucking hate it. I hate it. I really like it. I never drank it before. I but love it. I really it. like it. You know, at Costco, on your membership, <laughs> I get the um, the little, they have like an 18 pack of like their minis. The little ones. Mm-hmm. Do just, you get the Costco brand though? Don't you? I do. I have. But I don't like the Costco brand compared to Vita Coco. But, but okay, actually, no. Well, I was going to say, I think I know your favorite brand, but we're trying to get a partnership, so. <laughs> <laughs> of coconut water? Yeah. What is it? Is it not Harmless Harvest? No. I actually don't drink them at all. Really? Mm-mm. So this is your favorite? This is like, I won't even lie, Vita Coco is my favorite. <laughs> okay, I'm not even you look flexing, at that? <laughs> you know? And sometimes you got to put on for the people, but no, Vita Coco is my favorite coconut it's water. It's the shoulder pads. It, it's everything that's happening right now. No, literally, I'm in vintage Christian Dior today. This is my grandmother's jacket. Maya said I look like Whitney Houston. Channeling Whitney. Channel, channeling Whitney. Oh, okay. Okay, so I don't look like no, her, just to clarify. No, <laughs> <laughs> Which is fine. I'm channeling Whitney Houston. Um, su- circa Super Bowl. Yeah, yeah. She had the white, white headbands headband. on. And a, wh- she a had windbreaker like a jumpsuit. Wind a white windbreaker. But you have the vibe of like. No, no, yeah, I'll take it. Top Whitney. Like that was Whitney at her prime. Mm-hmm. Your prime Whitney vibes. <sighs> Whoa, I love that for me because. Because <laughs> I don't. I don't. You know, that I don't be know confused. You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't know if we're feeling prime Whitney vibes, but that's fine. Well, you're here, and that's half the battle. Mm, yes. Nice to see you, Chris. Nice to see you too. <laughs> um. So you're growing your hair out like ponytail length, or no? I well, let's slow down on that. I'm not sure about <laughs> no? ponytail length, but you guys just found out. Well, at least Maya found out that white people. White people, feel, <laughs> which is pretty cool. Yeah, I didn't. I just. <laughs> I don't, I think to me, is, I can't even conceptualize what a fade on a. Like, does Eminem have a fade? Give me a white Travis Kelsey. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. That that's a fur that's, that's a, fade a fade at its finest. Okay, so it's like mm, But like it's like the white chocolate men that fade their hair. No, but I think a lot of guys get fades. Like I can see this it's like super Celtics popular. player it's, with a fade. <laughs> it's it's just like a haircut essential. Like Justin Timberlake used to have a fade. Yeah. Or I don't know what he does now, so I don't wanna I mean, it's hard for me to even name a white guy because they all have fades. What? <laughs> like but famous we've white never guys? seen Chris's hair with a fade. <laughs> yes, you literally. Have I was like, though. yeah, we have. Yeah, sure. yeah, but I just feel like your hair always has like a little. So that's at the top, though. But the what fade. Is, tell me what a fade is. The fade is at the base, from the nape of the neck, and up. it's when you go like the lowest setting up, up, up. Yeah, the fade is just referring to like it's the literally nape of the neck. F- fade. It fades into hair. hair. So you could have a fade and a high top, for example. High top fade. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's really. So let me ask you this. Okay. You could have locks and a fade. Yeah. You yeah. know guys that shave yeah. the nape, nape of their neck yeah. into their locks? That's a fade. Mm-hmm. Interesting that we never, you know, talked. I mean, uh, this is just I, like I, new. I guess what's the difference between a fade and a Caesar? What the fuck is a Caesar? I think it's like a specific type of fade. Hold on. Please. A Caesar? Because I grew up. Here we up- go again. A Caesar. <laughs> what the fuck is that? I love to just bring up the word Caesar on this podcast, don't I? No, I mean, but a Caesar cut. I feel like that's what I grew up with men being like, I'm I'm, I'm getting a Caesar. Like, I know specifically Jay-Z sounds- always says he has he used to have a Caesar. Yeah, it's a type of fade haircut. It's a I type of fade? Because, like, a fade could mean, like, anything, like, on top, on top. or any type. It's, like, just, like, a certain type, yeah. So it's, like, a this low... This looks like a specific style. No, 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 no. That's, that is not what I'm thinking of when I think of a fade. Caesar. I've legitimately never heard of that. Sounds like a northern thing to me. I th- honestly yeah. thought it was, you know... I think so. It's a northern thing? I think it was, like, I think Nas was the first one that, like, made it popular. Mm. 
Okay. So probably a northern thing. Okay. Oh, interesting. I, I honestly attribute it to maybe New York. I thought it was a New York thing. Yeah. But I don't know why I think that because I'm not from here. <laughs> but you're still Boston. That's It's kind of the same. Yeah. So my grandfather is a barber. Not that that makes me one. But like, yeah, that's essentially the same. That's the same thing. I don't know why they call it a Caesar, though. But sorry. Oh, the Caesar cut is a hairstyle with short, horizontally straight cut bangs. The hair is layered around two to five centimeters all over. It's named after the Roman emperor. Let's go. It's all back to the Roman it Empire. Literally all it literally all, all goes back to the Roman fucking empire. Tiberius Caesar Augustus. Yo, he was looking fly back then. You know who though. that is? Yeah, he had a fa- No, I, I don't know who that is. I was to look up Tiberius. Was it Tiberius Caesar? Oh my god. How, Chris, how did you look you know that up and crazy not tell that us his, that? Caesar Augustus. They really cut off his first name, Tiberius. Oh, Caesar Augustus and Tens. <laughs> Got it. They're they, the same person. Yeah. But like mm. They, he goes by his middle name and last name, I guess. See, here's the thing. I don't know that I would call that a Caesar from what I think of as a Caesar haircut. Because no, that don't look good at all. That's, like, not what I would go to a barber saying. I, well, I maybe they just, the historical depiction is not right. What? I don't know. I can't, I'm not, I just keep, I just feel like I'm talking to Whitney. <laughs> I might as well be a... <laughs> Damn. Okay, what I was going to say was, like, my grandfather's a barber. So anytime... Well, I feel like I'm well versed in men's hair because any time, like no guy could come to my house when I was younger and not have a haircut. Like that was my mom's big thing. Oh, oh, like he doesn't have a haircut. Meaning someone you're dating? Yeah, someone okay. that I'm dating. I remember one of the one guy came to my house and he got out of the car. First of all, he didn't drive up the hill, which really pissed her off. Then he came to the door and he was she was like, Okay, so he doesn't drive up the hill and then he doesn't have a haircut. Like, who the fuck But he did come to the door. Yeah, he came to the door, but it was, you had, to, my mom, you, they were adamant about driving up the driveway. How would he know that? You're going to make me walk down the driveway? Well, isn't he going to hold your hand on the way down? It's not about that. Okay. No, I just need to understand, like, how I feel like. Because we lived on kind of like a hill. Uh-huh. And so there was an incline. And it was a pretty steep incline, so it was like. Why wouldn't you drive up the hill? I guess I'm just like thinking about my driveway and I'm like, yeah, yours is flat. It's flat. And it's short. But it's, no, it's long. But not, it's a long drive. Like, here's the thing if I was coming up to my house for the first mm-hmm. time to pick up a date, I wouldn't know exactly where to drive, like where to park. Would I what, park that on seems the street? Like, no, but why you would, would you park you in do the driveway? That? Yeah. Why would you park on the street? Like, that to me doesn't make any sense. See, I just feel like my dad would have something to say if they just came straight. A, you cannot walk on the grass. Like, it'd be, but, they but it's would not, not a, even start. Well, okay. Only crazy people park on the grass. No, walk on the grass, not park on the grass. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes. Only crazy people walk and park, and park on, on the, the grass. grass. <laughs> yeah, that's insane. But. You drive in the driveway because think about it. He's coming to pick you up. He's going to make you walk down a driveway or down the hill. Okay, you're in heels. Are you going to walk that much further because what? He didn't want to pull into the driveway? I mean, the probability of my being in heels is also like. The probability of me being in heels is very high. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But also. It's fine. No, you have this one. It just feels like. Okay, that was just. It's, my parents were very, they were sticklers when it came to like that type of No one was coming etiquette. to my house picking me up anyway, so I don't even know why I'm involved in this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> You'd still be involved. I mean, yeah. But anyway, what's up? How are you? Oh, you know. Oh, hello, guys. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode. Sorry, we didn't even greet you sooner. We got a little carried away. That's okay. Sometimes things happen in life. Um, how are you doing? Good. Honestly, so much better. Had a little week, but I've recovered coming back, um, trying to be myself cool. and um, prepping to go away for the holidays. When do you leave? Wednesday. This Wednesday? Mm-hmm. And you're going where? Where did you decide? I'm going back to Costa Rica. Okay. Because I tried, <laughs> I was looking at this place in Guatemala and I was going to book it. And I'm like telling my mom that I was like, oh, I booked this place in Guatemala. And she was like, Ugh. You're going to fucking Guatemala. And I was like, What's yeah, wrong with Guatemala? It's amazing. And you know how parents are. They love to send you like travel mm. three advisory. Remember when my parents <laughs> were sending them for you when you went away? <laughs> yes. They're, she sends me all this stuff about the from the national 
travel, travel page or whatever the <laughs> fuck it is that Guatemala's on a level three advisory, a level a lot of theft and murder or something, something. Honestly, I didn't read it. So you're going to Costa Rica. So I'm going to Costa Rica because I didn't want to hear all that. Great. And because it kind of scared me too. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, you know what? You know, I'm going to take my black ass to fucking Costa Rica because I know where I'm going. How and long are you going to be there? For 10 days. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then where are you going to be? And then I'm going to go to Mexico City. No, I do want to go to Mexico City. I feel like um, you should eat in Mexico City. From what I I haven't done it myself. Yeah. But where in Mexico are you going? Um, whole Bosch. Great. H O L B O X. Whole Box. Whole Box. And it's like Isla Whole Box, and it's. Um, Is this another retreat? Mm mm. You fly into Cancun. It's like to drive two hours and take the ferry over to a little island. And, or you can take like a little private plane. And how long are you going to be there? Until probably like. Oh, you don't know. Yeah. Okay. You know me, I book one ways and then yeah, when I feel like I'm it's time for me, me to out. go. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just have a commitment issue to plane tickets for some reason. I know I can get my money back, but there's something out pressing the like But you can always change your plane tickets. Like that's the thing. You can really there's same day changes even. No, I know. I just don't know why I do that. That's fine. I It really is like a commitment thing. Last night I was buying my ticket to Costa Rica and I was like, it took me the two fact hours. that you were buying it on Sunday and leaving on Wednesday, just like that in itself gives me anxiety. No, yeah. I definitely don't save myself any money. No. No. It's just like, not even the money. The money's stressful, but it's mm-hmm. like the... Yeah, no, no. Trust me. I, trust me. <laughs> I get it. I know. But... I don't know how to not be this way. That, no, it, if it doesn't bother you, then there's no issue. No, it bothers me. Sometimes it does stress me <laughs> out, but I just don't. I I don't know what I think. I'm like, do I really think that I'm going to find a better deal or find something that's better or, um, you know, I, you, no, I don't even know why. I just, that's like when I went to South Africa. For fucking two weeks. I booked the ticket the like night before. two days before. Oh, that really. Or the day before. Broke me. Maybe two days before. I didn't like that. Yeah. I don't like, like, it's one thing if you're going to Florida. It's mm-hmm. another thing if you're going to, like, a different country. Yeah. No, that's true. And, like, I would like for you to have a decent seat. Like, do you have a de- decent seat to Costa Rica? Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, it's, like, a premium economy or something. All right. You'll be, you're, yeah. I don't actually, I literally choose not to worry about you anymore. <laughs> yeah. You know what? I need to worry about myself because <laughs> I don't know why I fucking do it. And, and I think about it all the time. It's something about like planning something so far in advance. I'm like, who knows how I'm going to feel by the time it rolls around. Listen, I mean, that's it's why like making I don't plans. even, like, I can't confirm that I'm going to be at plans. I get that. But yeah. it's like, you know, you want to go. No, for, for sure. The I paid the money. Yeah, and I. You already paid for the retreat before yeah. you paid for your ticket, right? Okay. You know this. What this is what it might be. I have to feel like a couple days before. I like to feel it out on what time I want to leave. Okay. Like, but I don't... you always like to leave in the morning. Yeah, but like sometimes I don't, or sometimes I run out of time. I haven't packed. I gotta leave later. Or you know, yeah, it's really a timing thing. Like, what am I kind of feeling a couple days prior? Two that I can like, you know, prep myself for. Mm. It's a mental struggle out here, y'all. Yeah, okay. It is a mental struggle. You want to say anything else about that? No, I'm. I'm taking this book one way. I got to figure out what I'm coming. You back. don't even have a return from Costa Rica, Mm-mm. even though you're. Can you extend your program if you want to? Probably not, but um, because they're like really booked up, but it'll be fine. There's, like, a lot of different airlines. You know what it is? Right now I'm comparing airlines on, like, which. Here's my other dilemma. You sound like me when I'm trying to order food. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> here's my other thing. I'm about to make gold on Delta. On Delta. Mm-hmm. And then I'm about to level up on United as well. And so I'm trying to. And doesn't to, it have to be by the end of the year? And it has to be by the 31st. So I'm taking a flight out on the 30th from Costa Rica. And I'm trying to decide if I want to fly United to Costa Rica or if I want to fly Delta. And then, you know, which vice versa coming back. Because. Can't you just book one and one and then call it a day? Yeah. But I'm trying to that figure way you'll out. you'll have your points guaranteed. Yes. But I just don't know which one I want to do there and back yet. Okay. You know, that's a personal thing. 
And I, then I believe- American Airlines is trying to jump into the competition. And so I'm like, Damn. why do you why do you like spread yourself so thin with all these airlines? Because I like to le- well, I'm a Delta girl by heart. Yeah. But I just so happen to be like leveling up with United. Yeah. And so I was like, so I was like, why not give it my all and try to <laughs> and and try to, you know, get some more status at United? Mm-hmm. Because also my credit card is linked to United. My I have a Mary, points. Yeah, my points. Mm-hmm. And if I level up on United, then I can transfer my credit card points to the United one for one. Are you an Uber girl or a Lyft girl? Uber. Mm-hmm. Okay, does Uber connect to mm-hmm. which? I get points, my credit card. Oh, and, and then, then I get Delta what? points. Okay, you get Delta or points. Or miles or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I, I get Lyft Delta points. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Or maybe I get... Actually, I think I get points on my credit card when I use Uber because, yeah. well, then that makes sense. But then you could also be getting the points on your card and still getting all the mile, like all the miles, like for your Delta point or for your Uber points can be going to your Delta account too. So you, I feel like you're missing a step there. Sounds well, from I don't what have you're explaining. a. I don't have a Delta credit card. You don't need the credit card. It's literally like you, you go in your Uber your account and you're like link. I don't know if it's on Uber, but you can definitely do it in Lyft to link to your Delta. It might be. I just don't because that's like yeah. then getting double the points. Because mm. I'm a Delta girl. Yeah. But Curacao is on JetBlue mm, direct. Yeah. So right now I'm like I literally I have to buy a flight today because I'm like I'm gonna get hit Mosaic. Yeah. If I buy a flight. Yeah. Gonna get what? Mo- like it's like their top tier mosaic. Oh, mosaic. Okay. I know oh, they're just mosaic. I'm like, cute. oh, they don't want to be like platinum, titanium, no, they're just nothing. Cute like that. Mosaic. Mm. Mm-hmm. That's, that has a nice little ring to it. Like, sure. Yeah. But yeah, I just yeah. So I'm trying to be able to get enough status to transfer my points one for one because right now, if I transfer my credit card points, it's three to one. You know, no, well, good for you. you know, it I'm sounds like to... you have an actual plan. And United, I like transferring my points to United because you can go further with. Is that the fucking slogan? <laughs> Is that the fucking United Airlines slogan? Um, I feel like like I don't really know who this Sierra is today, but I like her. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm being logical, and um, she's almost like so to the point. It's scary. Oh no! There's this good leads the way, but you. But who, have you ever heard that? No, never heard of it. That means they're not doing so well in the marketing it department because points go further at United. That needs to be their slogan because <laughs> it really does. You can upgrade, get Polaris business class. Like that. Oh, shit's I do nice. love the Polaris, dude. It's so fucking. And then Delta. This is my gripe with Delta, and I love Delta. You know, my mom used to work for Delta. I did not know that. Yeah, she, she was a flight to... attendant. No, no, no. She worked like at the counter. Um, no, no, no. <laughs> she she did workers comp for. Um, uh, for Delta, so she like you need nurses to review uh, the workers' compensation claims. That makes so much more and sense. So that's what she did. Or the counter. Yeah, she's a pilot. Yeah, <laughs> literally, literally. Nah, she's back of the house. Back of the house. Um, yeah. So we used to like fly free when we were younger. Buddy passes, all that bullshit. Cute. Um, so I feel like it's in, ingrained in me. But you can't get fucking anything. You can't even get a breath of air. For you know, I feel like Delta fifty thousand points oversaturated Delta. market, right? Like everyone is Delta people. Like mm-hmm. the amount of points you need to have for it really to mean anything is yeah. it doesn't. Oh, you I don't need like, like a million points. Yeah. Meanwhile, damn, I'm I was gatekeeping this a little bit, but you know, United, I've gotten round trip tickets for like twenty four thousand points. Yes, yeah, same. I've I like you can upgrade your ticket to like. When you're traveling overseas, you can put in a bid to upgrade your ticket for, for 30,000 points. points. Yep. And that's for, like, the Polaris, for, like, that's first class. Yeah. Okay. Take my fucking points. Take my fucking money. Like, I never really use my points on my credit card, so I might as well transfer them to United. So. There you go. Trying to be efficient and proactive and... Is that, would you call that, like, financially I mean, conscious? you have, like, reasonings for it. I feel like you're doing something right. Yeah, it just takes a damn fucking long-ass <laughs> time. It does. It takes forever. A little bit of stress. I did not plan on talking about Delta points today, but, you know, you love to surprise well, me. We just talked about Delta for fucking 15 minutes. Okay, <laughs> y'all. Did you know that hair thinning is a reality for about one in two women? If you're nodding along, take a moment to know that you're not alone. 
thinning is normal, and today I want to share a secret weapon that's been making waves, Nutrafol. Ever wish you could run your fingers through visibly thicker hair? Or maybe bid farewell to shedding like it's a bad habit? Stress, hormones, and the intricate dance of life are just a few of the multiple root causes of hair thinning. And Nutrafol? Well, it's like the superhero that addresses these key root causes through a whole body approach to hair health. I get it. Dealing with thinning hair can be exhausting. That's why I'm excited to tell you about Nutrafol. I use it and let me tell you, it's been a game changer for me. No more empty promises, just science-backed supplements promoting healthy hair growth. Nutrafol is not just a supplement, it's a lifestyle choice. It's the number one dermatologist recommended hair growth supplement clinically shown to improve visible thickness and strength. From postpartum to menopause, and for all of you plant-based warriors out there, Nutrafol has four unique formulas tailored just for you. Each formula is physician formulated using drug-free, science-backed ingredients, giving you the most reliable results. Ready to embark on your personalized journey to better hair growth? Head to Nutrafol.com and take their hair health wellness quiz. It's not just a quiz, it's your roadmap to identifying the causes of your thinning hair. Nutrafol will then handcraft a personalized plan for you through their whole body health approach. I took the quiz and let me tell you, the results were eye-opening. It's like Nutrafol gets your hair's love language. And here's the magic. Nutrafol supports healthy hair growth from within, targeting root causes like stress, hormones, environment, nutrition, lifestyle, and metabolism. It's not just about addressing the symptoms, it's about addressing the roots. And for my plant-powered friends, rejoice. Nutrafol is now available in a vegan formula specifically crafted for women ages 18 plus with plant-based lifestyles who are experiencing signs of hair thinning because your hair deserves the best too. In a clinical study, 86% of women reported improved hair growth after taking Nutrafol's women's hair growth supplement for six months. That's not just a statistic, it's a testament to the transformation Nutrafol can bring. Take the first step to visibly thicker hair and healthier hair. For a limited time, Nutrafol is offering our listeners $10 off your first month subscription and free shipping when you go to Nutrafol.com and enter promo code CODPOD. Find out why over 4,000 healthcare professionals recommend Nutrafol for healthier hair. Nutrafol.com spelled N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L.com, promo code C-O-D-P-O-D. That's Nutrafol.com, promo code CODPOD. I want to ask you about this because you already know how I feel about walking etiquette. I'm very passionate about where I think people should be walking on mm-hmm. the streets. You've seen me get into fights, etc. How do you feel? Because I was having this conversation this weekend with my friends and they were like, I'm tired of moving for people who clearly don't have the right of way. Are you the type that always just moves out the way? Or do you start challenging the people that are walking in your <laughs> It definitely Why is Chris laughing already? <laughs> it's just crazy. Well, that, like everybody has the thought, but it's like, are you? Are you like? Right. Yeah, like what is you your go-to? Come for their throats, <laughs> right? Because all, people are making this really racial now, and oh. I don't necessarily. Ooh, that seems like a stretch. Know that it holds that much weight, but I like. Mm-hmm. And then, and mm-hmm. then it was funny. We were talking about that this weekend, and then this morning on Vibes of a Black Girl, it's like you don't have to move out the way for white people on the sidewalk. You deserve to take up just as much space. And I'm like, okay, so this is really a thing. The, oh, um, what do you do? It really depends on like what type of mood I'm in and if I have time or not. Because if I don't have time, I'm going. You're just like. Psh. And a, here's the thing, and especially because I live in Midtown, so there's a bunch of fucking tourists, and they don't know where they're going, mm-hmm. what they're doing, what they want to do. They don't walk with any type of assertiveness or attention. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I have to assert my dominance up in Midtown mm. and just go for it because mm-hmm. they're like, oh, oh, oh. I'm like, we don't have time for all that flinching. We don't have time for. No, that. I agree. You sound like a real New Yorker. Yeah. So. You hear that, y'all? <laughs> two and a half years in, I sound like a real New Yorker. If you've been here two and a half years, that like I'm like, yeah, you've been christened. Actually, yeah, yeah. So it, you know, but I guess if I'm down in like Soho or something, mm, but what's your natural, like your natural reaction is to move out of the way. I do too. Yeah, I don't even think about it really that deeply. But I, there are times where I'm like, 
especially if it's like from a distance, like, mm-hmm. oh, let's see what's going to happen here. Right. Like, it's a little game for me. It's like a little live yeah. action Frogger. <laughs> Oh, Frogger used to be my fucking joint. It's like it's like Frogger in real life, but no cars. Yeah. And like, <laughs> what's going to happen here? And sometimes I feel like people always assume I am going to move out the way. Right. And then, bam, then you don't. And then what happens? And then what happens? Well, I have actually, like, run into people for that purpose, like, just to prove a point. But I don't think that that's, like, good to hold in your heart, you know? <laughs> I don't feel like that's yeah. the way. Yeah, no, I don't think, should we even be giving it this much logic of, like, who's moving and who's no, not? No, but I don't, I just wonder, like, do you have the same Is there some type innate of- feelings about this? Like, these girls were going in about how this is, like, a white-black thing, and I was like, I don't know. I like, don't know. Maybe I just don't think that deeply. I also don't really want my walking on the sidewalk to also have to be about race. Like, yeah, no, so many things no. are just, already about race. Yeah, I feel like that's deep. That is deep. But and is there I just, truth to it? And I'm just not willing to do all of that. But perhaps, perhaps there is some truth to it. You know? What do you have to say? Well, I was going to say, yes, there are some white people who walk around this world and act as if they're the only ones that exist. It's one of those things that would be hard to debate based on sidewalk etiquette. It would depend, like, I think we'd need to track more, you know, once that person gets into the building and is moving, (laughs) like, how they move in the office and how they move with their coworkers would be a better judgment. I feel like, you know. Okay, okay. do you feel like you ever... Like, do you think we're just programmed to move out the way? Do you think that something was taught to us way back in the day that we don't even think about it, that it's automatic? Because both of our inclinations Mm -hmm. is to move out the way. And I feel like the people that are upset about this are the people that are now making the effort to not move out the way, which means they were moving out the way before. Right. Are we programmed to do that? Probably. I would say, you know, yeah. Like, I wonder who taught us that. Or where we taught that. Grandparents, like, I think, well, like our grandparents' generation, you know, my grandparents grew up in Jim Crow. Mm -hmm. And, like, I I don't even know, like, going for a walk in a neighborhood that's not yours. No, you just don't do it. Yeah. Like, you either don't do it or, yeah, you do get the fuck out the way. Yeah. You know? Less. Less drama. Yeah. Less. I mean, uh, yeah. Yeah. An example that was brought up on Saturday was Emmett Till, which I also thought was a little extreme. Oh, well, goddamn. Okay. Like, if he can't whistle, we should walk. And I'm like, is that... If he can't whistle? Well, you know, Emmett Till was... Supposedly, yeah. Suppo- yes. Allegedly whistled at a white woman. Allegedly. Correct. Mm-hmm. In the grocery store, the mm-hmm. convenience store, whatever it was. So if he can't whistle, <laughs> yeah. we shouldn't move out the way. Like, obviously, we moved out. Like, we, in those times, if we weren't whistling, we were always getting out the way. Oh, okay. I see what you mean. Okay. No, this is not what I mean. This is not no, my... No, no, no. But I see, you know, <laughs> what you're... I see what you're saying. Okay. Yeah. I mean, Ooh. your face alone was my face. Yeah, no. I, yeah. That's... I mean, I, I, perhaps we've been schooled. I really just would love to do a reel of all the facial expressions yeah. you just went through. <laughs> well, y'all, it's a couple days before Christmas. I didn't think that we were going to get this. We, I, you know, but hey, that's our life. So let's go. Let's roll with it. But damn. I, I, I encourage you to think about it when yeah, you're walking no, on the street I, next. I feel like I will think about it and I'll look and observe, especially like when we're people watching. Yeah. Yeah. I still get out the way, though, because I'm not trying to, like, I, I want to get out the way, and mm-hmm. I also want people out of my way. Yeah. If they're, like, you know, we've already talked about my rules, but, like, if you are doing my, yeah. like, get out my way. Right. Yeah, because my don't play on the sidewalk. Fuck around, and she will shoulder I never, her way. Sh- I've never you just, shouldered. It's a fast walk where you're, like, <laughs> where you're, like, oh. Uh, uh, uh. I'm like she wants you to hurry up and get out the way. But I, which it's like if you can if you can understand that from my body language, why can't others? You're talking about that one tourists. lady that I had they're a fight with, right? Or they're old. But well, not always. The lady. Are you talking about the lady I had a fight with? 
on the street. Oh my god, that is a distant memory. I forgot about that. Oh, that where were we were in Soho. It was it was uh, on our way to that restaurant that we go to after we record. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't you looked back and yelled at her or something? And I was like, "Well, what happened was yeah." You tell the story because I'm. She was walking and she didn't know where she was going, so she kept stopping. We were behind her. She kept stopping, checking her phone. So I was like behind her, and I was like, "Hello, like ho- mm-hmm. like lady." Yeah. And she caught my hand movement. So then she said something to me, and I was like, "Well, you don't know where you're going." Oh. And then she started speaking to me. And then, yes, I did turn back and say something smart Yeah, we were with Tiffany. Correct. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I do. Mm. I don't think I've ever gotten into, like, any, you know. Altercations? Not altercations, but I wouldn't even call that an alter- alter- mm. then It was a very New York moment. Like, get out my way. Yeah, it was. It was very New York. I appreciate that. Well, you thought I was a psycho that day. Yeah, no. I, oh, oh, <laughs> like, yeah. What if... Not that people are pulling out guns here, but like... I what if, you were about to say. Yeah, what if she pulled out a gun? Come on, I'm from Atlanta. I have to think about it. And that is literally my first thought. Like, what if somebody... Dude, you know how many people... Then it's my time to go. And oh, I hell they no. are my hell well, fucking no. <laughs> I ain't. There are certain ways where I'm like, I am not going out this way. I I just refuse. Would you? God go, took his time on me to take me out that way. Would you go and hell testify no. in my trial? Yeah, I would good. testify. There you go. So we're but good. like, if we don't have to have, a, we don't have to have a testimonial. <laughs> then let's not have one. Like, if we well, sh- no, no gun was used in that altercation. No, 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 totally not. No, and I feel like you know, New York people don't really have guns like that. I feel like that's probably not true, but maybe that's why we feel like we can say whatever we want. It's not like the country where you literally just have guns. Mm-hmm. What is the, what are the gun laws in New York? Do you know? You're fucked if you have a gun. Yeah, if you have a gun on the island of Manhattan, like you can't have one. You you can, you, and they you, just pass a bunch of shit that you could like theoretically like carry, but there's like all these zoning laws and shit. So, so you, you can't, can't like have an fuck. open con- open. No, 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 no fuck no. no. You have to be it's like concealed the carry. No, or some shit to be able to do that. Yeah, really? Yeah, no, no it's not. You want Rikers? Carry? No, no, yeah, I don't have a gun. I actually don't even really believe in guns like that. But like. I just assumed you could walk around New York with a gun. No. Oh, hell no. 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 <laughs> what, what is fuck? going on, y'all? I thought you could walk around anywhere with a gun. No. 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 Can you walk around in Boston with a gun? Probably not, but I don't know the gun laws in Boston either. That is wild. I no. It, Georgia? Yes. Yeah. You can walk around. That shit is on your hip. No problem. You can problem. move your shirt aside so everyone knows you're carrying. You don't even. Ha- you can walk into a Walmart and Why buy. Why do you gun. think it's different here? Because y'all ain't crazy. No, but why can you do that in Georgia? You can't because do that in New York. Because what the fuck? We got a whole bunch of fucking Republicans who are want, <laughs> want to swear by this damn Constitution or the shit that was written a thousand years ago that doesn't apply. The right to the bear, bear arms. arms. So why yes. can't I have a gun with with? Oh my god! The right to bear arms applied to a time when like there was war right but it's still part of our constitution yeah but like you don't need to have like semi-automatic rifles you don't need to have fucking i agree with all things things you're saying but why is it not allowed in some places why what happened because, here specifically was yeah. they had some law for a bunch of years that you couldn't like concealed carry or anything in like the city of New York and stuff and even like throughout the state but they just repealed that it was like a hundred year long thing or something and then um but what happened is they still have like all these different zoning laws and stuff so like the city puts in ordinances and stuff so like it's a you know how like states have their own laws cities have their own laws all that sort of stuff so it's like technically it got repealed but like you still can't do it you're going to jail forever okay one other maybe stupid question okay. does this apply to just new york city or the state probably the mostly new york city mm. like it's easier in the rest of the state but okay here's my thing like and i like guns i like to shoot guns I think that everyone should learn how to use one. I think we need stricter gun laws. And I think it's crazy that people are able to walk around in Georgia with guns, walk into a Walmart. It's easier to get a gun than it is to, like, rent a car. I mean, I obviously see those reports, like, once there's a huge 
mass shooting or whatever yeah, the case and may be. It's annoying because we are the only country with, with insane yes. mass shootings at the rate that we have them. It is, I think that it is ridiculous. Ridiculous. And it just has to do with the access to guns. Yeah. Access, you don't even need to fucking register your firearm or like in There's no Georgia. background checks. No. Mm-mm. Everywhere. Yeah, yeah, I'm saying in Georgia. Oh, oh, oh. I might have said no. What did I say? You said no, uh-uh. Oh, so yes. I- yes, <laughs> yeah, sorry, sorry. <laughs> yes, in Georgia, yeah. Like you, it's so fucking easy. It's literally like going to get a drink. It's, it's insane. Mm. Yeah, I just, I think it's one of those things where like, people are like, oh, we're gonna pray. Like, let's pray. And I'm like, okay, well, how many fucking times are you gonna pray? And I and I believe in God and I believe in the power of prayer, but also at the same time, wait, what are we praying about, Sierra? Like the people who have been shot in these mass shootings mm. and the people who have been traumatized in these mass shootings. And, and you're like, like, let's do some legislative work. Yeah, it's work like every yeah this. every time we were like, we're just gonna pray about them. I'm like, well, let's What's take this to the fucking really? house. Like, why? It seems like such an easy thing to solve that we're not solving, but. Okay, well, I, now to come full circle, that lady did not pull a gun out on me. Yeah, thank Th- God. Thank God. But if you think I didn't think about it, I thought about it. Yeah. Mm. Okay, let's let's go a little lighter because I have been watching a lot of TV recently. You know what? I'm glad you brought this up, actually. <laughs> okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Say what you're going to say. All right. So I've been dipping my toe back into the reality TV world. Oh, my God. I'm so glad you brought this up. Oh. Because, you know. <laughs> I've been watching TV. Okay. Mm-hmm. What have you been watching? I've been watching Keeping Up with the Kardashians. Oh, oh. Okay. I'm not caught up. Well, oh, it's not even called that anymore. My bad. It's just, I just called dated, the Kardashians. I dated myself. I've been watching up. Been watching Kardashians. Is it just Kardashians? The Kardashians, I believe. Mm. Yeah, on Hulu. First off, remember when Ka- Kris Jenner wanted to change her last name back to Kardashian? Do, do you ever watch a show back in the day? I did. And Actually, that was and I do remember <laughs> yeah, her wanting and when Bruce, Bruce was still was around like, and Bruce was like, what the fuck? Like that was so disrespectful. So thirsty. That was so disrespectful. <laughs> I actually think about that all the time. But I think it works, like her being Jenner and them being Kardashians. Although I do have this policy with myself that I want to always have the same last name as my children. But she has the same last name as two of her two children. Of our so other why children. not keep that? It wasn't enough. True. I think she maybe felt like Kardashian Kardashian had like no I know exactly prestige. what she thought yeah okay okay Sorry. so you've been watching the card you want to uh-huh. talk about that yo I am really enjoying it <laughs> I are you how I, many seasons in are you now just the last two okay and you're caught up I have not well I don't know when this this sh- it even comes out or whatever me, me either okay so yeah I just. I wasn't always, like, a Kardashian stan. Like, I, I'm i never, like, a huge fangirl of anybody or anything. Mm-hmm. But um, there's something about them that is very intriguing, obviously. I like, you know, watching the show for, like, home and spo. I do love how their houses are designed and all of that. But also, I think they're very relatable. And did you ever watch Keeping Up with the Kardashians? Yes, Okay. Way back in the day, though. Because I feel, I watched that, and I have started watching the Kardashians, but Mm -hmm. to me, it's just so produced Mm. that it takes, like, some of the closeness that you had with them when they were literally, like, acting a fool beforehand. Now it's, like, very, it seems very produced to me. It almost feels like I'm watching a scripted show and not reality. Oh. Well, I didn't really get that vibe. Mm. But perhaps because I haven't watched, you know, the older seasons in a very long time. I guess just in terms of, like, you know, the things that they go through and relationships and, like, being a parent and raising kids with separated parents. I I think from Kim and Kanye. Yeah. I I thought it was really interesting. And I was like, oh, okay. Like, not that I ever thought that they were batshit crazy, but I do really love Chloe. I think she's, I've always loved Chloe. She is just like she just just seems like she's, she's just, just the one. She's like this shit's going up in the flames, and you know what? 
I'm going to smile through it, but also going to try and see the positive and, and make maybe it out of this fire And myself alive. in my room for a few days, yeah. which I did too. I'm like, I get it. Yeah. She's like, I don't want to talk to anyone. I don't want to date anyone. I think like the Tristan stuff is crazy, but then she's also still, I think one, some, the main thing was how someone had did her so fucking dirty mm -hmm. and she still turned around mm -hmm. and, and like treating him with kindness, treating him with, was just so kind to him and like accommodating and let him live with him. And then the brother, you know, and then the brother and just even helping Tristan figure out that situation after somebody, after this man dogged her and essentially ran her through the mud, like, mm. I can relate to that. That a lot. is, yeah, that is some type of grace that I wish to give someone someday. Like if they need it, I'm like, how do you, how do you like suppress that part of your ego? You know, um, as someone who I feel like has done something, not I haven't been drugged through the mud in the same style, right? But I also have tried to be there for exes in really trying times, mm -hmm. and I just feel like. At the end of the day, you have to remind yourself that, like, you love to them for a reason. Right. And, like, they actually need the help. Like, yeah. this is bigger than your problems. Like, mm -hmm. they need help. Right. Doesn't make it easy. Yeah, it doesn't make it easy. I'm like, how do you, like, separating that emotion from one it's thing? It's really hard. I think that perhaps, like, in, in the moment, if I say perhaps one more time, if I think, you know, in the right time, obviously given you know, the situation, I think I would be able to be like, okay, I'm going to, you know, put everything to the side and, and let's just focus on, you know, the most important thing, especially if it's like a situation of life or death. But I actually can see you now that you're talking about it, struggling with that. Yeah. Because like I, you, that you feel violated. Yeah. And so then how do you, when you feel that level of violation, how do you turn around and, and still, you know? Yeah. I think for me, it's also like, not that everything is tit for tat, but it's sometimes you have to like no. stand back and look and like say, where's the balance here? Like, yeah. And what where am I getting? Like, am I, not that you always have to be gaining something from a situation, no. but it's like, again, big picture, high level. Like I'm here for you d through all of this. And what right. is it doing for me and my mental? Like how yeah. am I protecting myself? Right. Yeah. Are my boundaries now like deflated because- we're putting your needs before. Yeah. And it's a very codependent thing, actually, yeah. like to to do what she's doing and to take care yeah. in that way. And I think that that's where it becomes confusing for me because I'm a person who loves boundaries. And so for me, would I feel like, okay, if I'm there for this person, would, would they then, again, take advantage of, you know, me or... Your kindness. My kindness mm -hmm. and... Do am I putting myself in a vulnerable mm -hmm. position, and it just, which in a matter of life and death, I know that I would be able to come through for someone, but it, it I it, like no, boundary it wise, struggle. I, it I would still, you know, I rock. just was called when I had an ex went that went to the emergency room mm -hmm. a few months ago, maybe yeah. within like the summer months, and I dropped everything and went. Long story short, like. He ended up being discharged before or like at the same time I would have been arriving. Mm -hmm. um, and so he was like, I'm actually OK. Just turn around. And I did. And then there was like this huge guilt trip afterwards. Like you should have. It would have been nice to see you. I heard it from him. I heard it from his mother. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wait, wait, because I, I just stopped everything I was doing. Right. And I was on the way to help you. <laughs> I was I was literally at the stop when I checked in being like, uh, I'm like a five minute walk away and you told me to go home and now I'm the problem and now I'm actually not being respected and my peace is not really being taken yeah. into account. Mm -hmm. It's just you, you, you. Yeah. That's, that feels imbalanced. Yeah. Like that would rub me. Oh, it's rubbed me all the way wrong the wrong way. way. Yeah. I mean, obviously like there's a lot of context to this, but like this is after a lot of uh, like help that I've provided this year. Yeah. Like this was a pretty transform transformative year for this person. And like I was behind the scenes very supportive. Yeah. So it's like, and now you're going to try to drag me because I didn't see you when you had a little moment at a hospital. Like, come on now. A panic attack. Mm, yeah. yeah. I know. Like put some ice in your hands and call it a day. Does that work? 
Yeah, reset your nervous system all. Okay. Like when I have panic attacks, I you just put ice, put in ice my hand? and then on my stomach. Okay. Because you know what? I'm no, no stranger to a panic attack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, no, girl. Trust me. That ice put on your neck, maybe, girl, wherever. Cover your whole body in fucking ice. But yeah, see, like, I don't, I feel like that. And one thing I will say, like, I don't ever want to come across as, like, disingenuous. Mm -hmm. And so, is that a word? Mm -hmm. Okay. As as disingenuous because I feel like if I'm going to do something, I genuinely want to do it. Yeah. Especially in the realm of helping someone get through something or being there for someone. Mm -hmm. And so it confuses me a little because – if I if if I experience that type of response, yeah, which like if you like really break it down, then you're like triggered from all your shit from your relationship that you were feeling the same or like similar way. So it's just like oh to god, me, yeah, a, 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 yeah. And I think for me that part mm -hmm. of being triggered when I am triggered, it is like a full body thing. It's not easy, and so. So that's why I have to create those boundaries because the idea of floating back and forth yep. from that, you know, emotional trauma is unstable to me. Correct. No, I literally made myself unstable. Like not unstable, but like yeah. that was it. That was a bother. Like it's a moment that still it still bothers me now. Mm. Okay, back to TV though. Sorry. I know we keep going everywhere. It's okay. Yeah. But Okay, so I've been so you never watched Love Is Blind this season, but I always wrote this down to talk to you about, and then I started watching. Which one? This was like the one, like who was on it? Yeah. Um, that like let me think. That girl Stacy, the blonde Stacy. She had a like little bald head man Izzy. There was like oh, yeah. Lydia. How little, many seasons a year are there? Probably like two. I okay. know they're already coming out with a new one in. Um, the, the, February. The newest one. Yeah, that's based in Charlotte again, I think. Oh, was it originally based in Charlotte? I can't remember if they had a season in Charlotte, actually. No, it was Atlanta. You know what? Married at First Sight was Charlotte. That's what I'm... So I'm bringing in Married at First Sight. Oh, let's go. Who knew, though, that Married at First Sight and Love is Blind is the same producers? Yeah, I could see that. It makes so much sense yeah. now that I know that. Yeah. Anyway, so... On Love is Blind, there was one guy in this past season that was basically like, I am not attracted to my partner because she wears so much makeup. He, like, when they had the reveal, they, he, like, she had her makeup caked on. She had eyelashes. He was just, like, not into it. He didn't even know how to tell her. He ends up telling her a few days later. It blows up. They don't even make it, like, they don't, mm -hmm. they just don't make it. Y yeah, good. Then on Love is Blind, I was just watching Love is Blind San Diego. I actually loved this season. Of Wait, San Diego. are you saying? Okay. Oh, sorry. Not love is blind. Married, Married at first, first sight, okay, San okay. Diego. Married at first sight, San Diego. Same thing. Crunchy granola man. Although this other guy wasn't super crunchy granola, but this guy is like very into the environment, and he is like, I'm way more attracted to my partner when she's not done up. When she's super done up, oh it God, bothers shut me basically. The fuck up. And so then he went to her sister to ask the sister how to approach his wife about wearing less makeup and how to be – what like, we're mm – -hmm. Thoughts? Stupid. <laughs> Get rid of the whole man. Because, honey – But do you feel like you're wearing makeup for men? No, it ain't about you. Exactly. Like, if you think that I'm fucking wearing makeup for the male gaze, you're wrong. They don't exactly. even know what, they don't even know what mascara is. They right. don't even know what a fucking contour is and they don't even know about this fucking NARS shade. Okay? <laughs> so, no. I'm not wasting my money and time wearing makeup for right you idiots. Sorry, Chris. <laughs> I'm just saying. That's exactly how I feel. Like, like how are you so narrow-minded and, like, self-centered that you think that this is for yeah, you? Like, like bitch, I'm doing this for you. You don't know about this Danessa Myricks highlight on my cheekbone right now. You don't. And if you think that I wore that for you, you're wrong. I wore it for me. So when I walk past a mirror and I see my reflection, I can be like, damn, girl, that fucking cheekbone, that shit's cut. It's literally never been about a man. <laughs> Ever. The audacity... I know. For them what to would like, you do mm -mm. if that happened? Because I can't. I can imagine me. 
I would like to do a little role play. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Let's go. Sierra, you've been my girl for a few months now, okay? We've been kicking it. Right? Oh, we got through a few months. Okay. Yeah, I cook for you. Okay. You know, yeah. like, it's, oh, it's a good life. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah, this is good. Yeah, 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 it's been going well. Mm-hmm. But, um, babe, I got to just tell you that I just feel like you don't need any makeup and you look so much better without it. So, like, do you have to always wear it when we're together? Is this what you had to tell me? Yeah. Like, do you, how do you feel about that? You think I should wear less makeup? I just like you better. You're beautiful either way, but I just like you better. Oh, you like me better without any makeup? I just think you look better, more natural. Hmm. Do you have anything at my house right now? (laughs) (laughs) Because if you do, you need to come get it. (laughs) It was the look up and down for me. Oh, my God. (laughs) You need to come get it. Matter of fact, I'll mail it to you. Oh, okay. So did I offend you? Did like, you what offend is, me? What is the problem with me just telling you how I like you? I what? just, I like you either oh, way. How I you just, like me? how does, what do you, what is me having to, what does me wearing makeup have to do with you? But babe, I just, I'm just telling you how I'm most attracted to you. Oh, so it's oh, like, how even, you're most attracted to me. You know, like even if we're, we're going to, you know, get intimate, like you could just like take your face off before. <laughs> <laughs> that is a fucking rich ass statement. <laughs> If we're you, well, I'll tell you what. If I lived my life, you know, according to you know how you were attracted to me, it would probably look completely different. So therefore, you should just go ahead and walk out the door. If you don't feel like I, you know, you feel like make wearing makeup is a deal breaker. Go ahead, go get. I'll give you your shit too. Mm-hmm. But babe, can we just talk about this? No, there's what conversation? You said you like me better in a way that you know I'm not ex- comfortable expressing myself. You like me, but like I when we met, you had makeup on. I still thought you were beautiful, and then you took it off, and I saw you for the first time, and I was just like, okay, well, listen, you should love me, you know, <laughs> in all my fucking ways, okay, with pimple patches on my face and with a fucking beat contour and this sick ass highlight. And if you don't get it, you just don't get it. So you got to go because you obviously don't get it. But we've been dating for months, babe. No, hell <laughs> no. And you want to tell me that. But I love you. You don't love me because if you love, love me. I love you, you natural. Lo- that's you, you're stupid. <laughs> you're stupid. <laughs> and scene. scene. <laughs> <laughs> you're stupid. <laughs> Wait, okay, let's wrap up this episode. Wow, that actually had me hot, like, <laughs> like for real. Like, I don't, mm uh, do, <clears throat> Okay, let's end it on this. If I had to hand out a business card that says warning blank every time I meet someone new, what would it say? I guess I can say for you now that don't comment on her makeup. Mm-hmm. For you, I'm going to say don't be in the kitchen when I'm in the kitchen. Mm. If you can't cook. Mm. Yeah. Or don't hit my dog. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta tell that picture to yourself. Okay, I'm Your sorry. Dog. I take mine back. Uh, war- <laughs> warning Sierra Miller hits dogs that aren't wow. hers. <laughs> I spanked Buka. Yeah, and she has not gone over it. She cried all night last night, and I know what she was saying. She was like, Auntie C spanked me a year ago, and I'm not over it. Buka ain't thinking about me. You don't know that. Okay, guys, thank you so much for listening. Please remember to rate, like, subscribe, and follow us on Instagram (laughs) at codependence2 underscores. And we'll see you next week. Bye, y'all.